Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. You know, I've had snow blind the water monitor here for about a week and a half or two weeks and there has been so much drama behind it. So I want to clear the kind of water a little bit if you so speak. So when I got this animal, I bought it from a guy named Evan and really didn't know much about it other than the fact that it is absolutely beautiful. I have no interest in breeding this animal. As a matter of fact, I had the opportunity to buy a pair of them if I wanted to breed and I just wanted to get a male that was super, super cool because it's so absolutely incredible. Incredible. Well, I didn't really know the back history and what I had said was that there was an albino that was caught in the wild A snow blind type of animal and then they produced hats and then they bred the hats out I suppose and produced the snow blinds and that these were the first babies that were actually being sold That's what I thought. I didn't know the whole back history Well, it turns out that the actual guy his name is Danny He's from an Instagram account called albino Salvatore breeders kind of got really upset because he was the actual breeder of this animal The truth is is that I always give people credit Credit, so I apologize that I didn't give him credit for it. I didn't know that he produced it. The other thing is I didn't really understand the back history. So apparently, yes, there was an albino that was a wild caught, right? But apparently it wasn't a snow blind. It was just a T negative albino. This is where it gets weird, even with me genetically, because I understand genetics tremendously, and this doesn't make sense. Apparently, what has been said is that he actually bred the albino, produced hats like I had mentioned, but then produced more albinos, but they weren't snow blind. But when he was able to breed the albino to albino, T neg to T neg, they produce snow blinds. So almost like it was a super version of the albinos. At least that's what I understand. Again, I don't know if I'm 100% accurate. This is what I've gotten from all the people that I've talked to about the particular thing. So listen, typically when you have a recessive mutation like a T negative albino, you can produce T negative albinos from producing an albino to a hat or a hat to a hat or whatever the case may be. What he's saying is that when you actually breed albino to albino, somehow it accelerates and goes from an albino to a snow blind. So theoretically, there was never a snow blind albino. The patriarch or matriarch, whatever the case might have been, was an albino, but it wasn't a snow blind. It wasn't until he bred albino to albino that he produced actual snow blind animals. At least that's what I understand about the situation. Unfortunately, it caused so much drama because because I just didn't know and I told you guys what I thought was going to happen in all the 35 years of genetic experience I had. Apparently, he got really upset that number one, I didn't credit him, which I do apologize. I didn't know you even even produced them so now there's your credit but number two I don't know why it turned into such a drama where it was like people were so mad at me like somehow I was lying and doing a bunch of stuff I didn't I didn't lie about anything I just bought a cool animal didn't really care that much about the back history of it because it was just gonna be an animal ambassador I was never gonna breed it I was never gonna sell babies and uh, you know maybe I should have done more research I have no idea I was just saying like what made sense right you know animals from Indonesia probably came from an albino bred to hats and then and blah 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 so regardless it created a tremendous amount of drama over the last week and a half where I was getting attacked constantly online and listen I don't care about that you guys know I don't care when there's negativity it's just the way it is but I didn't understand why it had to be that way because now I'm making the record clear I'm telling you what I think I know and if I'm wrong again please tell me I'm wrong again but I don't think I am I think I finally have the story straight nevertheless this is an amazing animal hiccup is incredible and it's just a shame that the reptile hobby sometimes has to have so much drama in because we're all in it together guys the fact is is that Danny did an amazing job producing incredible animals enough for me to bring it all the way from Indonesia here to the reptarium I mean that's pretty incredible right that I saw an animal over in Indonesia I love so much that I was willing to pay over in Indonesia basically what they cost here in the States because they were so much more beautiful and I just thought it was incredible so regardless drama 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 I hate it I don't like to be involved in drama I don't even like to talk about drama but at the same time I wanted to get the record straight so that I'm giving credit to the right person and also telling the story of how they actually produce snow blinds. So there you have it. That's it. I'm not talking about again. Hiccup is going to be talked about only as an amazing animal, not as the genetic or drama that it caused. I just caught this and I thought I would share it with you. This, of course, is Cupcake, the boa constrictor. And oftentimes people think of big giant boa constrictors as animals that don't climb and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, this animal climbs like her. And this is a giant boa. I mean, you know, it's as big of a boa as I've ever seen. And she is always up on the branches up here, climbing all over the place. So it just goes to show you that, you know, we don't really realize how important important is to give these animals the room that they need in order to climb to really give them that mental enrichment and just exercise that they need. You know, if they're a big lump just sitting on the bottom of an enclosure, they're not getting the exercise that they probably need to be healthy, right? And I just think it's amazing when you see a 70, 75 pound boa 
constrictor, climbing up on branches like this. And I've been told from friends of mine like Tom Crutchfield, Chris Gillette, that literally they have caught most of their boas in trees, not on the ground. So I just love it and I just thought I would share it with you guys. And just another example of what I was just talking about with the boas, look at Perdita, just perched up here, just loving life. Again, reticulated pythons do a lot of climbing in the wild in particular. When we caught ours down in Lamban Baju and Astana Ular, it was in a cave, but they were mainly up on the walls, like six, eight feet in the air. Uh, we only caught one that was on the ground, so retics love to climb too. And again, look at how amazing Perdita looks. Guess what, I got an early Christmas present. You know what, this is actually from Facebook. I have no idea what it is. Oh, I should say Meta, by the way, but the tag actually said Meta. I have no idea what they're sent me, but uh, it's pretty cool. I just figured I'd unbox it with you guys and see what we have here. Look at this, Meta for Creators. Let's see what we got. All right, what did they send? 12 days of holiday cheer. Some sprinkles, some all kinds of stuff for cookies, obviously, making cookies. We got a little, oh, it looks like a Reese's Pieces cups type of thing. Got some recipes here. We got, what is this? What is it? Ooh, this is chocolate. Oh, so this is the chocolate and the peanut butter to make the Reese's and then all of this. Some beautiful socks. Oh my gosh, these things are, are these are mittens or socks? I don't know, I'm gonna take a look. Look at these, man. Oh my gosh. These are snuggly. That is amazing. So I got some socks, a couple pair of socks, and uh, it looks like I've got a candle. Arr, it's always cool. I love it, man. I mean, it's super, super cool. Yep, it looks like we've just got a candle here. Lori loves candles, so that's great. And I think that is it for that box. So I uh, just thought I would share with you guys. It's always awesome when the platform appreciates you and, and gives you stuff. So uh, I tell you, these socks, put these on right there. Oh, so comfy. Hard boy, toothless. No, no, don't. Oh goodness, here we go. So up like that, bing, don't. God, it's a lot of hands, handiness going on right there. All right, good, stay, stay. You're so quick, man. You're not giving me time. Oh, got monitor juice in my mouth. Awesome. Bink, perfect. Toothless, absolutely amazing. Right here, bink, run. <laughs> Oh no! Right here. Perfect. He's getting so big because he grows. One last one for your big butt. Packed, dropped, and loaded. Perfect. It's been a few weeks since the multi Cinta actually got moved into this new enclosure. Looks absolutely incredible. Loves to hang out in this little thing right here. Hey buddy, what are you doing silly monkey? Come on. Oh, you look so incredible. Look at this animal. You guys know that I'm a Boega nut for sure. Of course, mangroves and stuff like that. And this multi Cinta is incredible with all the yellow bands jet black shiny absolutely incredible but again we moved it into this enclosure and it seems to be thriving like you can't believe so it's cool to see this animal go but it's going to eventually get like five or six foot so it'll eventually get a much larger enclosure than this as it gets bigger you guys know that our animals are in brumation but actually these ones here are ones that are just about big enough to go into brumation but we wanted to feed them just for a handful more weeks so they're almost ready to go and there's just like some scaleless corn snakes that are absolutely amazing again just on that cost but breeding, right? Not quite there, so we'll feed it for another few weeks and then actually put them down. Another no black eye, which is a Terra Humera mountain king snake. Of course, we have Mexican black kings. Got a false water cobra here that is, look at that. Look at that animal right there. Whoo, doggy. Look at that, flatten out like that. Oh gosh, look at it. That is a perfect example of a false water cobra. And that's why they call them false water cobras, obviously, is because they have that cobra hood, right? But the truth is they do have a mild venom, but nothing too absolutely terrible at all. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff too. We've got, you know, this guy's here. This is the Porphyracea cocci, which are really absolutely amazing. And I'm really excited about this. It's been several years since we actually produced the Japanese rat snakes, or the Kunisur Island rat snakes, actually. These are what they call Climacophora, but we actually have an albino male and this is actually a het female so we can produce some more of these guys and some albinos too and they're just super cool again it's been a number of years since we produced them so i'm super happy that we actually have a female that's up to size to breed for the first time so these guys again will get fed over the next you know maybe two three weeks go off of food and then get into brumation just brumate for maybe a month or something like that and hopefully we can get these guys to breed Top boy waffles waffles everybody dude i just was about to say Chris and waffles. i want waffles come on oh you move a little bit quicker there 
Great, so you guys, your legs are longer. Come on, come on. Come on, big boy. Up, 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 up. You want that? No, okay. Good boy. Nice and slow. Yeah, kill it. Urgh. Is it tail ticklish? Another one? Yeah, it's a good boy. Oh, oh, oh. It's a dinosaur. We're down in Florida, we actually talked to Chris Gillette about alligators shedding their teeth, right? They have 80 teeth and they'll typically shed their teeth about every two years. Well, snakes actually shed their teeth too. And green tree pythons are no exception to that. My buddy Mark over at Texas Chondro actually sent me a bag of adult green tree python teeth. It's pretty cool. I actually have reptileteeth.com and I always say, I wanna do something with this teeth. I don't know what I wanna do, maybe some jewelry or something, I'm not exactly sure. I just think reptile teeth are really cool and I think the same thing with alligators alligators too like what can we do that's amazing so let me know in the comments what you think we can do with these teeth that maybe someone would want or something on that lines I just think they're too cool to just waste and throw away right but uh, I appreciate Mark sending them to me they're absolutely awesome to think that, that one day these guys were in the mouths of some green tree pythons so I had a tour that actually came in yesterday and they brought us a bunch of freeze-dried stuff this is from a uh, fancy freeze it's actually fancy-freeze.com uh, it's pretty cool so I tried these yesterday and oh my gosh they were good but Lori wouldn't try them so you're gonna try them today I don't know these are freeze-dried I mean I'm telling you it is so good this is freeze-dried cheesecake give it a try yeah, seriously are you gonna eat this oh, I'll eat it yeah look <laughs> oh. I guess you will eat it that's good it's astronaut food <laughs> it literally looks it feels like styrofoam like you try <laughs> you're it. clearly eating it yeah it's good it's good right it tastes like cheesecake <laughs> I think it's really, really good. That's very weird. The more it's it good. melts, the more it does, but that's a really weird consistency. It's a right? weird texture, it is, but it's oh. good. So I want to try two more things really quick. We've got uh, actually freeze-dried milk duds. Look, that's going to be what? weird. That's a milk dud? That's what they say. Here's a milk dud for you. Uh, Whoop, you dropped it. Let's this try. looks like a pork rind. It, it doesn't look like, look like a milk dud. <laughs> that is even better. <laughs> This is so it's, it's good. It is good. It is so good. Oh my god. It just melts in your mouth. That's good. That's that is, weird. I just don't know that I believe that's a milk dud. That tastes like a milk dud and it's amazing. How does a milk dud turn into that? I don't know, but it's amazing. Skittles? These are skittles. You can see they're kind of exploded. Freeze dried skittles. I'm going to take a red. These are so good, ma'am. I'm so too. Wow. Wow. This is just what happens like with dry ice or whatever? I guess so. I don't know how they do it, but it's cool. So uh, I appreciate you guys dropping these off. Got a couple <laughs> other things to try. Watermelon taffy. Oh my gosh. It's going to be really good. Mango. Yeah, this is banging. Tastes like a donut. <laughs> Milk that donut? Yeah. Thanks so much for watching the vlog today. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor. Hit a playlist over here. It really would help the channel and it means the world to me. You know what else would mean the world to me? If you subscribe to this channel right over here, turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you in the next one.